<laughs> kind of automation do you do This is good. Here you can see the complete portfolio of electrification components that we have today. So beginning with the high voltage battery, which stores our electric energy that we need for driving. We have the power electronics that takes the energy from the battery and generates the phase currents for the electric motor. And uh, we have two different types of electric motors. One is the integrated motor generator and the second one is the second motor generator. So depending on the type of powertrain integration that we have and as the latest product, we have the electric axle drive, which we'll explain in more detail. So uh, those, those components, the power electronics and the motor generators, they were different parts and now the electric axle drive has everything together in one product and like a small and clever yes. package. Yes, that's the big advantage that we have a very smooth integration of that package. We have the inverter here which has connections to the high voltage battery. Here we have the connections to the phase cables. You see that we have a cooling circuit for cooling of the power electronics. And then we have an electric machine. So take, let's take this one, which was integrated near or inside the transmission. And you, again, you see that we have the phase connections for the high, high uh, power phase currents, uh, that we have additional connections for a temperature sensor and also for the rotor position sensor. And if you want to make up an e-drive of that, you have to combine everything. So that means you have to connect the inverter to the electric machine with the high voltage lines, also with the signal connections. And you have two separate cooling circuits, one for the power electronics and one for the electric machine. And then you also need, beginning from the drive shaft of the electric machine, then you go to the transmission, you have a separate transmission, and in the end you go to the axle. So if we look on this vehicle over here, we have those parts integrated here as separate parts, making the e-drive of that famous vehicle. If we now move to the electric axle, we see a very smooth integration. First of all, we have the electric machine here, then we have a transmission uh, with a gear ratio, fixed transmission ratio. We have uh, here the connection to the wheels so we have a differential inside here and we have the power electronics sitting here on top and what you see the big advantage is that everything is integrated here we see the connection of the phase cables from the from the electric machine to the power electronics so what you recognize is you do not need separate connectors it's just internal wiring that you have now um, we also have a smooth connection of the rotor position sensor to the electronics. We only do have one cooling circuit, so this is the inlet. We go through the power electronics, then through the electric machine. This is the outlet, so there, is, there are no longer two separate cooling circuits. We have the high voltage connection here, and we have a bus connection like, like a CAN bus, for example, or uh, something else that is used for commanding the e-axle. And everything is integrated into one unit, uh, which we deliver to the OEM, of course. And you can imagine that now the effort for integrating that unit into the electric vehicle is, is much less than we had before, because you mount that unit in the vehicle, you do the connections, and everything is fine. So the e-axle is uh, lighter, smaller, more cost efficient, yes, yeah, and makes yes. it overall easier to and it also offers us the potential of optimizing the e-drive itself. So our colleagues in Renningen in research have worked on, on so-called multi-objective optimization technologies. So we have a very good tool of optimizing the e-drive doing the electric, electromagnetic layout. Uh, we have a degree of freedom between the rotational speed of the electric machine because we have that transmission here directly connected. And of course, we also have a degree of freedom concerning the height of the, of the phase currents that you use for the electric machine. And now, like everyone is interested, uh, some technical data, some power figures, some, some talk. Yeah, the, the whole unit is configurable. So it's a scalable approach. You can start, let's say, from 70 kilowatt to over 200 kilowatts. We have ways of scaling uh, the dimension of the electric machine. Of course, we can scale 
the phase currents of the inverter, so we can either use a high power inverter or less power, and of course we have means of, of scaling the transmission. So we can cover a broad range of different vehicles, and optionally we have also integrated uh, a parking lock, so we can add a parking lock actuator if the customer demands for that, uh, so everything is integrated in one unit. Perhaps I should add something about the status, what you see here of course, it's, it's a mock-up, but we have uh, set up uh, our first samples and we have had them on the test bench and uh, we, we think that we will uh, get multiple uh, serious projects for industrialization so that we hopefully see the axle around 2020 on the European market as well as on the Chinese market. That's interesting. So then maybe we have a closer look now on the prototype standing outside, which has different components of those explained inside and yeah, experience the fascination of e-mobility. You're welcome. We have an impressive 350 kilowatts of power, which translates into uh, more or less 8,000 newton meter torque. Uh, it's a four-wheel driven uh, propelled car. All of the components you will find here in that car are uh, Bosch products, which are available in different series cars. So what we did here is like we put them together to have an impressive uh, performance and to learn about how the vehicle dynamics domain and the powertrain domain can interact very efficiently. We go into the uh, uh, up to the limits of what's physically uh, possible to experience how both domains, vehicle dynamics in terms of torque vectoring, active torque vectoring for instance, can interact with using the e-machine as a very, very fast responding actuator. That means in an instant we are possible to actuate the full power of 8000 newton meter torque. That it's That's, more, yeah. more or less impossible with a combustion yeah. engine. That's more or less impossible even for a truck. Yeah. yeah. What I can show you, I have it on, on video, is what we did in IAPLOG. The car is able to turn on the spot and do a full 360 degree turn. Maybe we could try that out now. No, yeah. it will cause a lot of problems with our traction system. <laughs> general terms, I mean, building up electric car is not as complicated as anymore as with a combustion engine, but still you need to learn a lot about the physics playing together with the vehicle dynamics. So it's not only about speeding up, of course, it's about learning how the car reacts at the limits. And for the guys from the braking systems, it's important to know like where, is, where are the limits. Yeah. Braking. And for us, it's important what do the braking guys need from the powertrain yeah. system. This car has four electric motors, one for each wheel. Exactly. The motors are inside, they're not like closely built in or assembled to the to the wheels they're inside and this is acceleration full max you can see you would not believe the car overall weight is like something around 2.5 tons with all together we're sitting here is like 2.7 and it still feels like you're driving a very fast sports car like compared to a tesla although it's not as fast as a tesla in terms of acceleration. So we started this prototype project in late 2013, 2014. We finished it by end of 2015 and we took it into operation more or less in IAPLOG in, in the winter testing period 2015, 2016 with the guys, with the colleagues from CC. And you, in, the, in the winter testing, just for example, like the, the, um, the battery power just is, is yeah, like weak in the it's, cold. It's Are you testing things like that as well while testing? Not so much. Um, we did experience a bit of, uh, we lost a bit of power here, but the point is like um, 
the focus because the batteries are not that powerful or not that big. Uh, we have a very like a heavy car, but the battery packs itself, the two we have built in, they only offer three, uh, 35 kilowatt hours of power. That is not much because for instance, now I'm already running at 30% and we started with 50%. So the two rounds took us like 20%. So it shows that we built this car solely for analysis, for learning, and we need to do a lot of charging if we drive a, a lot of like meters or kilometers, of course. The most fun is like working together with the guys from different domains because we were working here together with guys from combustion engine because they were delivering the vehicle control unit. We're working together with the chassis vehicle dynamics guys who have a, were fully in charge of the vehicle dynamics, the ESP uh, and so on. And we, we included our main powertrain components, the motor and the power electronics. So working with the different disciplines that is like very tempting, is very interesting and makes a lot of fun to see how the Bosch components work well together to deliver like what, what we want. Power, performance, customer experience, like that's the point. And in the end it will benefit all the products because we know how our components work well together. Yeah. And we can deliver like a good experience to our customers, OEM customers and end customers. Yeah. And from the, for the passenger, that was just like an amazing experience. Like the power really was impressive. And if that's the future, um, even performance-wise, uh, you don't have to be afraid, and you have you really can look forward to that and experience. Of that. course, but so. it's clear not all the cars in the future will have this high-powered version of the car, which is not necessary at all. It is like for a simul, like if if you're crazy enough, you can drive something. Mm -hmm like uh, uh, in, in a Tesla mode or an insane mode, or whatever. Um, but for us, it's very helpful to understand the limits of the system. And that is, that is what we need to know to control and manage it in a safely way. So that was the uh, tech deep dive, Manu. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And uh, thanks for watching. And yeah. Thank you for the explanation. You're welcome. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.